you are turned on to Midwest Outdoors magazine. Since 1967, helping people enjoy the outdoors. Sponsored in part by Rapala Lures, Shakespeare Ugly Stick, America's strongest, most sensitive rod, Northwest Ontario, Canada, Abu Garcia, quality rods and reels for life. This week on Midwest Outdoors, Northwest Ontario bass action with Al and Dan Lindner. Al Moss tackles Leech Lake Walleye and Monster Bike from Saskatchewan with Steve Ryan. It all starts right here, right now. They're jumping everywhere. Look at the size. Oh, look at the size of the one he's got. It's a, a, a dog, man. When it's hot, it's hot. When you get them going on a topwater bite, it is unbelievable how many big fish you can catch. Smallies like this like topwater consistently more than largemouth or spots. Topwater baits, a lot of people think of them as cover lures, you know, fishing around cover on a lake like we're on up in Canada, Northwest Ontario, or on rivers, you know, to catch big fish. And they do work around cover, but right now we're not fishing around cover. In many bodies of water, the pods of pelagic bait fish are a primary food source and smallmouth being equal opportunity feeders wander out and chase these bait fish in open water. And that's what we're doing today. Northwest Ontario has the best smallmouth fishing I've ever seen in my life, steady anywhere. And uh, uh, the big lakes like we're on now that have Cisco, Smelt, Tulabee, these fish will often suspend out around the deep structures. You look for big basin areas like we're in now, where, where the open water forage wanders around. The top of the hump we're on, it's about 15, 16 feet deep, but we're catching fish 25, 30 feet around it. Many times they'll get off structure. Guys get structure, structure, structure in their mind. These fish, smallmouth bass in particular, anywhere they live, they're up, down, they're in and out many times in a day. These fish love to move. And oftentimes, if you're fishing in this part of the country here, you never go on the water without a topwater bait. You know, like Al was saying, we're fishing over 30 foot of water. Oop, he's got one. I'll go, go. I'm telling you, it's every cast. It is virtually every cast. Ooh, this is a small one in comparison to the fish we've been seeing out here today. Wow. Big one, big one. Boy, they like this, this wake bait. <laughs> Look at this thing. Look at them. I got Al in a holding pattern. He's, he's circling the tower. He wants to cast so bad he's licking his lips up there. <laughs> oh, I missed him. I bet you I get him this time. Look at that. Another bruiser, man, mm -hmm. on that uh, Rappel Awake bait. That is a good looking lure, man. That thing just rolls, rolls, rolls. You know, these top water explosive big smallmouth bites like this, they happen in quite a few parts of the country, but they all got one thing in common. They're big water and they're clear water legs. Smallmouth, big small, oh, there, I missed him. He'll come back. Big smallmouth, when they get to hunting big, big water like this, you need big legs, big bodies of water. This holds true in reservoirs, many of the natural lakes up north, parts of the Great Lakes. You, you know, clear water, big water, suspended forage. You, you know, that's where this, this can happen. People think fishing topwater baits over 25 feet is deep. Well, realistically, 25 feet is not really that deep. I mean, look at, I'm in Al's boat right now. I'm almost 20 foot away from Al. I mean, realistically, that's like two tail kicks to these smallmouths, so they can be on that bait like that. I fish smallies in a lot, a lot, a lot of places. Well, uh, being my favorite fish, I've chased them all over this continent. And, whoa, oh, that's a big gal. That's a donkey. <laughs> that would have to, oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Boy, it's like waiting for lightning to strike when you're watching that bait and it's just coming along and you're just, you know it's going to get blasted. What I wanted to say was real simple. Some of the best smallmouth fishing in the world is in Northwest Ontario. Amen. 
You know, and one thing that we were talking about, Al and I, is a lot of these resorts up in Northwest Ontario are drive-to destinations, you know, and you can have some of the finest fishing in the entire world, and it's not that far away. You know, I know a lot of you that are watching this right now are living in the sunny south, and you love bass fishing. It, think about what's happening in your part of the world in July and August. Pack up your bags, come up to Northwest Ontario. We happen to be in the Atacocan area, and there are so many good smallmouth lakes in this area like there is in many areas. Forget the summer bite that isn't happening by you. Come up here and enjoy the trip of a lifetime. Got him. Got him. Oh, let's see. Feels like a pretty good one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is so much fun. She's a beauty. She is a beauty. <laughs> Look at that. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's why I come to Northwest Ontario every single year and have been doing it for like 40 years to chase big smallmouth like this. I love catching this thing, a fish like this. And you know what they love up here? You can catch them all year long on topwater baits. You want the trip of a lifetime for big brown bass like this? Go check out northwestontario.com. You won't regret it. Looking for your window to the outdoors? We have you covered with a Midwest Outdoors magazine subscription. Call now, 1-800-606-FISH, and for the low price of only $14.95, you receive 12 big issues of Midwest Outdoors magazine. Every month, Midwest Outdoors sends you the ultimate fishing and hunting guide to the outdoors. Call 1-800-606-FISH, or visit MidwestOutdoors.com to get your ultimate guide to the outdoors. If you don't have one, you need one. Dana on All this right. one. Nice big fish. Well, there we are. There we go. Nicer fish. Yeah. Hi, welcome to Midwest Outdoors on a beautiful fall day here on Leech Lake in northern Minnesota. I'm Dana Pitt with the Leech Lake Tourism Bureau. With me today is legendary guide in this area, Al Moss. Uh, we just got our first walleye of the day here. A nice fish. Nice way to start. Yeah, nice way to Hopefully start. Hopefully there's more of that to come today. Good fish. You need a net? Yeah, probably. Coming at it. What do we got going here? Here we go. Stand down. Nice fish. Yeah, there's a nice fish. There there we go. go. Nice job. All right. Oh, that's a healthy fish. Hooked even through the roof of the mouth. So, lots of those. Very nice. Lots of those. What we're doing now, this is the fall of the year, as you can see the colors changing. And typically at Leech Lake, the pattern is the jig in the middle. Uh, during this time, our water temperature right now is right around 59 degrees. And we'll be fishing this probably till freeze up, uh, and they'll keep moving shallower and shallower to the point. But if you come to Leech Lake, you come here on opener, which is around May 15th, you'll be doing the same thing. So the spring and the fall patterns are basically the same. Then as we get into July, we switch over to night crawlers, we deal with leeches. We fish them on a bottom bouncer. And one we have to mention that really works on Leech Lake is shad wraps, um, the hot and tots, you're dealing with crankbaits. And anything that's crayfish pattern or anything that seems to be in the perch patterns really work well out here. And the last pattern that's really popular, there's a fish, um, is the fact that uh, we have slip bobbers. And uh, in the slip bobber situation where you're fishing with leeches or crawlers, again, right along the edge of the weed beds. Another nice fish. Just, I think I can get him, Dana. It's a good one. It's good enough for us to deal with right now. Another good one. Yeah. So these are the fish that the people want right here. These are legal in our protected uh, 
our protected slot on each lake right now is you can have fish underneath 20 inches and then you're allowed one over 26. So there's a lot of these 16, 17 inch fish up to, you know, the 19 and three quarters. It looks really good for years to come because we're catching uh, lots of small fish. So we're happy with this and this is the way it should go. might be a different thing. I think it's the wrong color. <laughs> Added species. And there's a lot of them out here well yeah, there is. too. Very healthy fish. And it's one of many species that we have. Here we're fishing in the fall of the year right now and we're catching pike, we're catching walleyes, but we need to tell you too that this is a prime time for catching jumbo perch. And by jumbo we mean from nine to 12 to 13 inches. And we have a lot of them. Boats are coming from all over and they can catch 20 per day. They can take home 40 in possession. And then the panfish bite is also going on. We do have quality crappies. We have quality sunfish. And uh, probably the most fish species this year that we had of tournament wise, I think we had about 15 bass tournaments. We got big bass in the lake also. So everything's available to you. It's a great time of the year. And a better fish. Yeah, it feels better, Dean. I don't know. I mean, just a attitude. Need a net on this one? Uh, let's see what we got. It's staying down, so better fish. Looks like it. Or an attitude, one of the two. <laughs> yeah, it's there a nice go. fish. Good fish. Good fish. You bet. That little orange deal is paying off, you know, it seems like that we have in the front. Um, these fish are really healthy, they're like footballs, you know, and uh, the pattern for this time right now that we're dealing with, right, is um, we're, we're using jigs and minnows because they're eating little perch, you know, and uh, they were on crayfish, but with that orange thing there, that little flasher gives you both of them. So anyhow, those are healthy fish. Well, that was a fun day, Al. Had a good time, Dan. I, I can't think of a better way to spend a beautiful fall day than catching walleyes out on Leech Lake. You know, in addition to the walleye fishing, the great fishing we have, uh, there's shopping, there's fine dining around town, we've got paved bike trails, hiking, there's a lot of stuff to do up here in the fall. And we've got over 30 lodging establishments scattered around the lake for you to stay at. For more information on the lodging in the Leech Lake area in general, check out the website at the bottom of the screen. I'm Dana Pitt with the Leech Lake Tourism Bureau. It's Al Moss, local guide. Stay tuned for more Midwest Outdoors. Hey folks, welcome to the show. Steve Ryan from Windows Outdoors, and I'm hooked up with a big fish. For, uh, for today's show, we're up here in northern Saskatchewan. We're guests of the Lemke family at Wollaston Lake Lodge in northern Saskatchewan, and this is what we're after, real big pike. Check out that girl. Swing her right in. Big fish. Really nice fish. Try not to do any damage to these fish's fins or tails. Now that's a beauty, real thick pike. And for today's show, we're gonna show you how to catch these fish. We'll show you our gear, the tactics, what type of water we're fishing. So you can come up here to Northern Saskatchewan, catch fish like that. That's really a beauty. So this is the type of gear we're using. We've got a Revo Toro high speed reel here that we're fishing with a spinner. We can burn that across the top of the weeds. And here's the cabbage. This is what we're fishing. This is a classic summer pattern. We're up here in uh, mid-July. The weeds are, are up. We're fishing deep cabbage preferably. So something between five foot of water and maybe 10 or 12 feet. And that really depends on how clear the water is. We've got this Abu Villain rod. It's got tons of backbone. This is a, uh, a high power rod here. Heavy action, got a fluorocarbon leader on here. This is a, uh, a Berkeley leader with a good cross snap swivel. 
This is critical. You don't want to come up here with cheap snaps. They'll open them up and you lose those fish. And then this is just your classic. This is actually a, a 500 series booker tail spinner, but we're getting them on plain maps. That's what that first one came on. If you get a fish that follows up, this is a, a rib shad made by Berkeley, just on a, uh, a Berkeley jig head with a heavy duty hook. If you look at that, it's got a good gauge hook. This will hold up to big pike. And on this one, I've got a steel leader. So this is a multi-strand steel leader. So either go fluorocarbon or steel, but once again, with a good snap. And this is just like, you know, here they see a big meal coming at them, they won't take it. But if you got this little cookie and you just throw it back, who can resist? And you know, they'll just gobble that right up. Fish, fish. That water is so dark. We're, uh, we're constantly changing up colors, which is important. We've got a day that's started off really cloudy. And now we got peaks of sun. So different colors perform better based upon sun or clouds. Lots of times in the sun, we like those metallic colors, give more reflection. Here he is, nice fish. And then the uh, bright colors, the oranges and the yellows, when it gets cloudy. See, and once again, a dead giveaway where we caught her. She's trailing some uh, weeds right in her mouth. When you come up here, up to Northern Saskatchewan, make sure you come up with heavy enough gear. There you get to see her. Oh, another thick fish. Look at that. And like I said, she's trailing a bunch of that cabbage. Just what we're looking for. And the thing is, you'd like to find some thick cabbage, but you're not necessarily fishing right in the middle of it. What you want is to find those lanes, those little openings. So always important, keep that tension once again. But look at that fish. What a fatty. Just in perfect shape. Not marked up at all, really thick across the back if you see that. But yeah, great fish, we're gonna get her back. Here we're, uh, yes, here we're fishing these spinners today for uh, these pike. And what you gotta be mindful of is you're gonna go through weeds all the time. So uh, it's obvious when you got hanging weeds behind there to clear it off. But another important part is on the clevis of these spinners, as soon as you just get this little bit of grass and it'll, uh, it basically tangles the action of that spinner. So each time, make sure that's clear. And like I said, this one's more obvious, but it only takes a little bit. Josh, I think we've got our going to dinner fish. <laughs> I think this one's gonna wrap up our day. Right on. That's a good fish. Look how broad that fish is. Yeah, and this one came on a soft plastic, actually like a little swim bait. Tori, this one's actually a seismic. Oh, one more run, eh? Mm-hmm. Powerful fish. Just that single hook with that jig. Look at that. Nice, nice going, Josh. Nice, and that hook right in the corner. Just beautifully done. Cool, this should do it. This That's will wrap up the day. Hey, right on. thanks a lot, Josh. I wanna thank Josh, our guide, for putting us in all these great fish, along with Wilson Lake Lodge, all the staff there, first class operation, uh, just like a bunch of camps up here in uh, Northern Saskatchewan. Uh, I'd like to also thank Saskatchewan Tourism. Like I said, just a great place to visit. Put this on your must-do list. Fishing's just outstanding. Whether you're a hardcore angler or a novice or want to introduce somebody to fishing, this is the place to do it. Get up to Saskatchewan, catch fish like this. Looking for your window to the outdoors? We have you covered with a Midwest Outdoors magazine subscription. Call now, 1-800-606-FISH, and for the low price of only $14.95, you receive 12 big issues of Midwest Outdoors magazine. Every month, Midwest Outdoors sends you the ultimate fishing and hunting guide to the outdoors. Call 1-800-606-FISH or visit MidwestOutdoors.com to get your ultimate guide to the outdoors. If you don't have one, you need one.
A great new option for the new HDS Gen 3 units is the Go Free Shop. The Go Free Shop's amazing. You get a wireless connection that now you can download the maps that you want to have on your unit. You can get your updates right to the unit. So this is going to be save you a lot of time and a lot of hassle when you're out there on the water. If you don't have the latest data, then you can go to the Go Free Shop and boom, pull it up, freshest data on your unit. You'll be able to see the contours that you want to see. This is Dish Row, Midwest Outdoors. We get a lot of questions at Rapala about why do you always put split rings on your baits? Well, it's very simple. To maximize the action of any diving bait, you want to be able to have a free swinging movement of the bait left to right. That sweeping action is what will also help and enhance the roll of the bait. So split rings attach to the eye or that pull point wire on the nose of the bait or on the lip is that most sensitive vulnerable part of where your line goes to enhance the action of the bait. I'm Mark Fisher for Midwest Outdoors Tip of the Week. Closed captioning of Midwest Outdoors sponsored by Midwest Outdoors Magazine on your newsstand now and the all new MidwestOutdoors.com loaded with video, articles, and TV episodes.